mean, of course. generally the results will always will out, right? Either the shorts or the longs are going to be right about something. And, and the stock will reflect that over time. With Tesla stock going up hundreds of percents in the past few months, the Tesla short stars are slowly being forced to cover their shares, causing the stock to go up more than it has ever been before. In this video, I'm going to talk about which short sellers have been forced to cover their shares due to a fear of bankruptcy, and also the Tesla short sellers that are still shorting the stock despite their massive loss of hundreds of percents. Since January, Tesla short sellers have lost a total of $8.4 billion. In the first week of February alone, they lost $2.4 billion as Tesla shares posted a streak of multi billion dollar daily gains. One of these famous Tesla short sellers, Mark Spiegel, has been shorting Tesla for many years. On December 23, 2019, he announced that he was cutting his Tesla short position from 20% of his fund to only 10%. But it doesn't end there. On January 9, 2020, Mark Spiegel announced that he was cutting his Tesla short position again from 10% of his fund to 5%. He claimed that Tesla is basically Bitcoin, but it's run by criminals instead of being used by criminals. Seeing Mark Spiegel being forced to cover his Tesla short position over and over again is quite funny. He's especially famous for the following clips. So the name of this presentation is Tesla is still a zero. Three broad reasons why the equity in Tesla is worth zero. Number one, Tesla's financials are horrible and worsening even before massive competition begins arriving later this year. Number two, Tesla has no moat of any kind and in fact now possesses trailing technology in all facets of its business. And by the way, I can go into the weeds on all of this stuff, so grab me any time and I'll explain these, these things. And number three, a bet on Elon is a bet on someone who can't be trusted. He has a long track record of making hugely misleading statements. I'm sure there are zero Tesla longs in this room because this is a short selling conference. Tesla could announce a Chinese factory deal, you know, tomorrow, right? And people are like, oh, and Phil LeBeau on CNBC would talk about it. spike the stock $30. It would be freaking meaningless. There is already millions of electric car capacity either there now or there long before that factory can be open. And there'll just be a, a drop in the ocean if, if they do. If they don't go bankrupt first. Don't have time to get into the weeds here, but trust me, what Tesla calls gross margin on an industry-wide standard is total bullshit. Jim Chanos recently said the only companies in which he'd seen something similar were Valiant and Enron. So now let's move up the ranks a bit and let's talk about who Mark Spiegel looks up to. This is none other than Jim Chanos. He's actually been quite successful at shorting previous companies, but clearly it hasn't been going well for him and Tesla. And this is one of those Tesla short sellers that haven't covered the Tesla short position and won't do it anytime soon. And he's actually openly stated that he won't be cutting his Tesla short position and because he thinks the stock is worth zero, he's going to keep holding it for the long term. How much longer can you keep the Tesla short on? Oh, I think uh, most short positions you can keep on indefinitely. Uh, there's no time frame on them. It's just a matter of price and and your willingness to hold and, and, and uh, either take temporary losses or book profits. So uh, there's no time frame on a short sale. Jim Chanos has been betting against Tesla for more than six years and clearly he hasn't been doing very well. People close to Chanos have said that his bearish Tesla position only amounts to 2% of his firm's portfolio. That means his short position is worth around 3.3 billion US dollars and is likely continuing to increase as time goes on. But now, if we move on to even bigger names, I know many of you guys have watched the movie The Big Short, where four people essentially predict the recession of 2008 and they make loads of money. One of these short sellers, Steve Eisman, who played the role of Mark Baum in The Big Short, was actually betting against Tesla. He has recently told Bloomberg Television that he closed his bearish bet against Tesla. Bloomberg decided to ask him for an interview, and Steve Eisman actually declined this interview. So we can see that he's clearly trying to keep his reputation intact. And now let's move on to David Einhorn, who was once famous for shorting Lehman Brothers before the 2008 crash. First, let's take a look at some of the things he said about Tesla in the past. Greenlight Capital's David Einhorn knocking Tesla today in a letter to investors, comparing it to the now bankrupt Lehman Brothers and saying the quote, deception is about to catch up to them. He writes, Lehman threatened short sellers, refused to raise capital, it even bought back stock, and management publicly suggested it would go private. Months later, shareholders, creditors, employees, and the global economy paid a big price when management's reckless behavior 
led to bankruptcy. Manufacturing problems continued, yet the stock jumped after the CEO promised the short burn of the century on Twitter. Despite short-term production surge theatrics, the company has missed all of its material manufacturing targets and financial projections. Losses at the company are mounting. Despite a gain of 14% in 2019 for Greenlight Capital, still underperforming the S&P 500, which rose 29%, Greenlight Capital already fell 7.6% in January. And Einhorn's not only failing with Tesla, he's also failing with Netflix. Another reason for the terrible performance of Einhorn is one of his biggest bullish bets, General Motors, which is of course a competitor to Tesla. And we already saw Einhorn exit the billionaire club a while ago, with his net worth dropping from over a billion dollars to $700 million. But at this point, with investors fleeing his fund Greenlight Capital, it doesn't look like it's going too great for Einhorn, and we could see his net worth drop to $400 million or even $500 million. And now we're going to move on to the worst of them all. And this is none other than Alexander Ropers. He's the CIO of Atlantic Investment, and he's been saying short Tesla since 2017. I am a value investor. I'm primarily in the long side, but we've been shorting for the 30 years that I've been in business. And uh, the Tesla story and the narrative that has been spun around electrification of cars has actually created phenomenal long opportunities, single digit P stocks all around the world, which we're long. Now, we are following Tesla. I have experience myself with automotive manufacturing as an investor, but also as a director of a car company at one point. And uh, I must say the biggest issue with Tesla, if you just step away from it's a cult stock or technology, anything. There's one factory, Freeman, California, that made 400,000 cars under the capable uh, ownership of GM and Toyota. Under seven or eight years of Tesla ownership, they've gotten up to maybe 100, 150,000, 200,000 cars. It doesn't matter. The max performance of their factory is 400,000. Uh, let, a... let me clarify. The, the internal combustion engine and the hybrid engines all need spark plugs. They all need uh, components to make these, these cars work. Uh, this year, we're selling 93 million cars, less than a million electric vehicle. There's a billion cars on the road, mostly internal combustion engine or hybrid. All of them need spark plugs. All of them need service. And there's a lot of companies in the disrupted areas, as they call it, that are going to have a long, long tail for, for decades making a ton of money. And so they're trading at four or five times EBITDA, and you can buy those, uh, you know, right now in the market uh, at, at such a discount. But now let's, reality is weighing in. It has a negative working capital. It has $10 billion in debt. It can't seem to make money. It has uh, its own retail outlets. It has its own charging stations. It is a model that has not produced, even with scale, any profitability. So... That's the issue. Uh, I wish everybody there well, but it's, you know, it, we need to take positions and this is a show. Okay, so I feel really bad for anyone who invests in Roper's fund. I don't know how, but he has $284 million inside his fund and it's actually down 23.5% since June 2013. Imagine having seven years to build a portfolio that people will invest in. And now imagine being down 23.5% after seven years. And in the meantime, the S&P 500 has increased over 100%. I don't know who's funding this guy, but I definitely feel bad for whoever out there is investing to this fund. And now let's end with the rudest Tesla short seller of them all, Gordon Johnson. The so-called financial analyst that got absolutely hammered when debating with the Tesla bull. You are looking at the wrong numbers. The number is to look, to look is revenues, how did they generate revenues? And what the backlog is? What about Question. cash flow? What what what? If you don't what make ab- any cash flow, how do you stay? How do you how do you remain what, as what, an ongoing about, entity if you're burning billions of dollars every quarter? How? A question for you. How do you how do you these stay in all business? Questions, you're burning these billions all of dollars are, every quarter. These all are these all are irrelevant. The only thing that matters that to the stock, how does that matter to the stock? Nothing. It has nothing to do with but stock. But it's not about price. stock price. What is what mm-hmm. is what money, matters for the stock price is goes to zero. what matters for the what matters for the stock is. Are you an analyst? How big is the backlog? How big is the backlog? Show Let's me any of your competition personal. that you named, even if they have five cars in the backlog. None. Tesla has more than $14.5 billion in backlog. No company in any industry, anywhere on the planet, has that much backlog. Why? Because it's, you need to have multi-dimensional competency. That is, you should have capabilities and capacities in your production, in your supercharging stations, in your software. Think about it. People are talking about Waymo as an autonomous car. 
What you does it look like? You think you'll have that car in your garage? Na they look like a mm -hmm. reindeer. So basically, when you think about autonomous, it is individual autonomous cars, it is fleet autonomous cars, yep. and then urban density okay. cars. And there's only Ch one company who has the foresight, software skills, and the intellect, and that is Tesla. You know, Rest it's a all, great debate. Don't even come close. Look at your competition you name. Do they have software okay. skills? No. Do they have superchargers? No. Do they have gigafactory? No. Which, do they have a Trip. backlog? But do you no. realize they Which just competition recently are you talking about? Network 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 nationwide. We, gentlemen, we are out of time. Uh, thank you both though, very much for joining us. Gordon Johnson is easily one of the worst short sellers on this list. His attempts to short sell are practically pathetic. It's not even just Tesla. He consistently loses money on all of his short sales. And so ending with a rooted short sale on this list, that concludes the video of Tesla short sellers are going bankrupt. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe, and I hope to see you in another video.